Welcome. At Toto, we understand how important it is to serve customers. Your customers expect you to know what you're doing. And that's why we've made this video to show you step-by-step -step how to install the Acquia in-wall tank and bowl in a standard 2x6 wall. The tools you need to position and mount the Acquia carrier are pretty basic. But since this unit installs inside the wall, you will probably be the one framing the opening to the required specs. We'll show you how using new construction. But if you have to remove an existing toilet, you'll have to take the old unit out, eliminate the toilet drain in the floor, and rough in a three inch drain in the wall. Be careful to purge pressure from the water lines. Either way, you can plan on needing framing tools and supplies as well. Check to be sure you have all the parts that are included with the unit, starting with the metal carrier frame. Please read the instruction booklet before you begin. You'll need to leave this booklet with the owner so they will have the maintenance information they will need. The Acquia in-wall comes standard with a plastic elbow drain and gasket for installation in a 2x6 wall. This is what we'll use for this demonstration. For installations where code requires cast iron, which also requires a 2x6 wall, you can purchase an optional cast iron elbow drain. For 2x4 walls, there's also an optional kit that includes an elbow drain with a gasket, a flexible coupling, and an adapter. Construction of the wall opening is most important. All framing is doubled to support the weight of the toilet. If metal studs are used for the wall framing, you will need to add wooden studs to the trimmer frame in order to provide the additional support. You have framing options depending on what your customer prefers as the finished height of the toilet rim above the floor. We're showing you a 16 and a half inch rim height which is the most commonly selected height for comfort. For plumbing, make sure that you follow all local codes and that permits, when applicable, are applied for and granted. There are two versions of the carrier, one for PEX water lines and one for copper. For a three inch drain, drill a three and a half inch hole that is one and three quarter inches back from the front of the studs and centered between the studs. You'll need a half inch water line about nine inches to the left of the waistline. Before you install the carrier frame, loosen the bolts holding the adjustable legs of the carrier and adjust them to raise the carrier. Subtract the distance from the rim to the toilet mounting holes from the desired height above the floor and use this measurement to adjust the legs below the center line of the toilet mounting holes in the frame. Now if the floor is not yet finished, you'll also need to compensate for the thickness of the material that will be used. Then tighten the two bolts. Now you're ready to place the carrier into the framed opening. To mark the location of the pilot holes for securing the carrier to the frame, make sure the carrier is flush with the frame. There are three lag screws on each side and two on the feet. Remove the carrier and drill the holes. Position the carrier into the wood frame. Make sure it's flush with the front face of the studs. Use a half inch socket wrench or box end wrench to secure the frame in the opening. Now you can determine the length to cut the drain elbow. Measure the distance between the top bracket that comes attached to the carrier and the top of the stub end of the floor drain. 
Use this distance and subtract a quarter inch to mark the cut. Make the cut as square as possible and then use a file to deburr the rough edge. To install the elbow, put the rubber gasket from a hose clamp onto the stub end of the drain. Position the elbow and hold it in position with the gasket. Adjust the elbow pipe so that it connects with the upper bracket on the carrier and use the lower bracket to lock it. Now you can tighten the hose clamps on the flexible coupling and you're ready to complete the plumbing. If a washlet seat is going to be installed, which of course will top an elegant installation, remove the brass plug and install a half inch stub end into the face of the junction tee and cap it off. If no washlet is to be installed, simply leave the half inch brass recessed plug in place. Once you've connected the half inch water supply line, you can turn on the water and check for leaks. To keep debris out of the in-wall system while you install the wall, insert the rough in protectors into the open tank inlet and outlet. Use silicone plumber's grease for easy installation. To attach the styrofoam plaster ground to the opening for the flush actuator faceplate, make sure it's oriented properly and use the two Phillips head screws provided. Now install the two half inch diameter mounting rods with the plastic sleeve protectors. Your next step would be to prepare the section of wall that will enclose the aquia. So you can see what's going on, we have used clear plexiglass for our wall surface, but you will use green board, sheetrock, plaster, or whatever your installation calls for. Just mark the holes and cut to fit. Make sure that the finished wall is absolutely flat and on plane. Any uneven surfaces can cause the toilet bowl to crack or break. Now you're ready. Time to install the Aquia Toilet. First, take off the rough end protectors from the toilet tank inlet and outlet openings. Step 1. Apply silicone plumber's grease to the inlet and outlet drain to make things easier. Insert the inlet pipe into the tank drain outlet until it stops. Use the edge of a straight edge to mark the pipe and take it out. Do the same thing with the flange pipe. Step 2. Now, put the inlet pipe into the back of the toilet bowl and using the straight edge, mark it and take it out. Repeat the same thing with the flange pipe. Step 3. With both pipes marked, measure the length between the two markings and add three millimeters. Use that measure to mark the cutting line from the end opposite the gasket and saw off the excess. Step four. Use your flat file to deburr the cut edges of the pipes and bevel them to a 45 degree angle.
Step 5. Screw the toilet mounting studs into the tank, leaving 2 and an eighth inch exposed. Step 6. Again, using the silicone plumber's grease as a lubricant, insert the inlet pipe and the flange pipe into the appropriate drain holes. Step 7. Now comes the toilet bowl. Line it up with the pipes and mounting studs. And use the hardware to secure the bowl. Step 8 is to apply a bead of silicone caulking where the toilet bowl meets the wall. Actuator plates can be ordered to fit decor. We have chosen to install the white plastic plate, but each style will be a little bit different. The first thing to do is to remove the styrofoam plaster ground from the opening. Save the two screws for later. Check inside the opening and make sure that the water supply line is connected to the shutoff valve and to the fill valve. Open the valve and fill the tank. To install the actuator plate, make sure that the front and rear tabs on the plate hook into the edge of the tank opening. Also be sure that the red and blue hooks go into their corresponding stirrup-shaped openings on the flush valve. Secure the actuator plate by turning the two gray slotted knobs one half turn clockwise. Adjust the two white threaded studs that are at the top left and bottom right of the actuator plate until they are recessed one half inch from the surface of the finished wall. To install the faceplate, remove the two square actuator buttons from the faceplate by pushing up on the keeper tabs at the bottom of each button and pushing the button forward. Use your finger to do this because a tool can damage the plastic plate. Now hold the faceplate in place and measure from the face of the actuator plate to the face of the push plate. and add two inches. Use this distance to measure from the squared end of the red and blue push rods and cut to length. Next, Thread the red and blue actuator push rods into their respective stirrups in the actuator plates 
until three quarters of an inch or 18 millimeters of the square end of the push rod is exposed through the push plate. You'll probably need to adjust the rod length gradually and dry fit the push plate while measuring to get the correct adjustment. Now, reinstall the two square actuator buttons that you removed earlier. So there you have it, the elegant Acquia in-wall tank and toilet by Toto. It is an installation you can be proud of and your customers will enjoy for a long time. If you add a Toto washlet to top it all off, you can point to this job as a benchmark for future customers.